Our next formula is the formula for covariance. Let's talk about that. What is covariance? Covariance is a measure of how two assets move together. As we can see, this measure combines the volatility of one stock's returns with the tendency of those returns to be up or down at the same time that another stock's returns are up or down. The covariance between assets I and J is represented by this formula. Notice the subscripts here. This says I and J. These subscripts represent the returns of two assets, asset I and asset J. On the right hand side of the equation we have the Greek symbol rho. That actually represents the correlation between these two assets. Okay? We multiply the correlation between the assets times the standard deviation of asset I times the standard deviation of asset J. Let's try this example. Stock J has a standard deviation of 11%. Stock K has a standard deviation of 20%. The correlation between the returns of these two assets is 0.62. Calculate the covariance. Okay, let's start with our equation. The covariance of assets J and K is equal to the correlation between J and K times the product of their standard deviations, J, K. All right? We were given a correlation coefficient of 0.62. The standard deviation of asset J is 11%. The standard deviation of asset K is 20%. Multiplying these variables gives us the following covariance. Okay. Now you don't have to plug in decimals. An alternative way would be the following. Our correlation is 0.62. The standard deviation of asset J is 11%, represented by 11. The standard deviation of asset K is 20%, and we get 136.4. I actually prefer this second method because it's less cumbersome. You don't have to deal with uh, as many decimal places. The next question, number nine. The covariance between XYZ stock and JKL stock is negative 98.8. That's the covariance, it says. The standard deviation of XYZ stock is 13%. The standard deviation of the returns of stocks J, K, and L is 19%. What is the correlation between the returns of these two stocks? Let's start with our formula again. The covariance between uh, assets XYZ and JKL is equal to the correlation between the two assets times their standard deviation. Okay? Now we have an equality, don't we? The left side equals the right side. I'm solving for my correlation. So if I divide the right hand side by sigma x, sigma j, and the left hand side by the same, sigma x, sigma j, I hope that you can see that on the right hand side of the equation, some of these variables cancel out, don't they? This cancels. And what we're left with is that the correlation between XYZ and JKL is equal to the covariance divided by the product of their standard deviations. So plugging this into, plugging our variables into this model, we're solving for the correlation. The covariance is negative 98.6. The standard deviation is 13% and 19%, we get a correlation coefficient of negative 0.4.
0.40. So let's, let's so let's review. Let's review the key points of covariance. Covariance combines the volatility of one stock's returns with the tendency of those returns to be up or down at the same time another stock's returns are up or down. We calculate covariance by multiplying the standard deviation of each stock's returns by each other times the correlation of the returns. The correlation coefficient is represented by this term, which is the Greek symbol rho. Now, it actually looks like a P, doesn't it? But it's not. It's the Greek symbol rho. Please be advised that in some textbooks, authors substitute an R in place of the rho because it does look like an R. In that case, the correlation between assets I and J would be denoted as R sub IJ. Okay, so don't be surprised there. Correlation is often represented by a Greek symbol rho or by the lowercase r. So these two terms would be identical, wouldn't they? Sigma i represents the standard deviation of security i. Sigma j represents the standard deviation of security j. Now we talked about correlation. Let's have a refresher on correlation. We know what it means when two things are correlated. That means that there's a relationship. And we know that there can be a positive relationship so that there could be a positive correlation or there could be a negative relationship. That is a negative correlation. At the two ends of the spectrum, we have perfect positive in which the correlation would be a positive 1.0. At the other end, we have perfect negative correlation which means not only is there a negative relationship, an opposite relationship, but it's a perfect negative relationship. Right in the middle, we could have zero correlation. Now, from an investment standpoint, if we combine two assets together that have perfect positive correlation, then remember, there's absolutely no risk reduction from forming that portfolio. On the other hand, if we found two assets whose correlation is perfect negative, then that is the maximum risk reduction. As long as our correlation is less than perfect positive, then there are benefits in terms of risk reduction from forming the portfolio. And you can see with the arrow pointing left, with the arrow pointing towards perfect negative, the further away you get from perfect positive correlation, the more risk reduction benefits.